So we took out large rodent. So Don't the Panama Canal should, should be fine, should it? Oh, oh wait, Remaining things are still US worse. Have been deployed to homeland defense, and with the Panama and Suez Canal shut down, our fleets are paralyzed. If the enemy blockades sea trade lanes, we're risking a global food crisis, followed by revolution and anarchy. We need to get to their leadership. That does seem like pretty devastating if such a thing were to happen. We should be Especially to in this situation where like most, most if not all, like commercial airliners are like boned because of this EMP. With US and Japan, there's been a lot of activity on this particular uh, island. At least we're getting to go to well, my island. island. So I can't give you a detailed sit <laughs> To the broad Just islands, this game's idea, idea of trying to like get like its You're share of Japanese-ness in this game with Without actually going to Japan. <laughs> yeah, instead it just sounds like random sounds that Michael Jackson made in a song. Yeah. Ah, uh, Starry Brat, where the lava's blue. Yeah, Starry Brat just sounds like some kind of sausage. You pull a glory <laughs> hogging stunt like you did in Panama. I'd eat that. And you might be the one man left behind. Do you understand me? I am whole foot taller than you. You do not scare shit. <laughs> now back off and leave me to the shining sausage. <laughs> so, this game's campaign obviously has some dumb stuff and is not, like as I've mentioned, not like a, an example of like amazing campaign design. One of those things is that it makes use of a couple of times of one of those ever popular like design tropes from like the 360 PS3 generation. You can all Brown guess and what blue? it is. No, no it's not. It it evolves being in place with a very large gun. See, I was kind of surprised that we didn't have that at the end of the last chapter cuz you had those two turrets right there. Yeah. But no, this is this is our first of a few turret sequences. And this is also one of those turret sequences where, like, the frame rate, the frame rate got real bad on the original. Yep, Delta Force gets to be all cool action guys on the ground <laughs> for this. Oh, for this uh, they're, they're, they're practically mechs right now. <laughs> yeah, the little exosuits and everything. So yeah. We've got a turret with like 20mm and 105mm. The 105mm is infinitely more useful because it ensures like insta-kill on all the foot soldiers and gets <laughs> us the kill bonuses real quick. Kind of surprise, uh, unsurprising when you're firing a gun that shoots bullets the size of a ketchup ball. <laughs> and this is just the right time for someone to point and come in and be like, no, nah, actually... That's the needle round that does that. Yeah. Donger. Also some very boxy cars, as you can see, out of the corners. <laughs> it's, it's funny, like, it, that was one of the things where I think there was, like, some channel back when this game came out that basically, like, highlighted how absolutely awful those looked, but without even realizing that those are based on real designs. <laughs> those There are cars, like, on airports that actually have that look, that are, like, that boxy and angular. The thing that was uh, that they kind of overlooked that was also bad was that because this is Unreal Engine 3, there's a lot there's obviously like low quality textures that first show up before the high quality ones actually load in. Mm. So yeah, that sort of sequence was over really quick, didn't overstay its welcome. Now we're back to the real shit. <laughs> We still got our same loadout as normal with uh with another starting weapon. Uh, our secondary now is a heavy machine gun, which we actually had switched to during the Big Mouse fight. And we're going to be wanting to hold on to that for the rest of this mission because if Big Mouse taught us anything, there's still another enemy type that we have to deal with. And you'll find that those are some big bullet sponges. Also thinking about it, I'm really disappointed I didn't make a Big Mouse Strikes Again joke in the last episode. So I'd like to do that right now. Thank you. Okay, you, you you can make the joke. Oh, I I 
I gotta say, I really loved how that jumping kick still managed to reach that dude on the other side of the escalator. <laughs> it, like, it was accidental, but it was that one of those dynamic things that just looked so cool. <laughs> Game's just like, eh, I love it. Yep. What was he doing? He was just sort of like, you know what? That was pretty cool. Ow! Fuck! <laughs> yeah. Seriously, did you see that guy? He's like a... He's like a Buddhist Tron. <laughs> he's a he's a Buddhist Vin Diesel. <laughs> now we need to get Vin Diesel in Tron. He would totally be up for that. Oh, absolutely. So now we got a rocket launcher. We'll occasionally switch to this from time to time, but um, in referencing back to Iconoclast and his score attack run, this was actually one of the weapons he always started like his score attack missions with. And, like, the reason for it is because, um, rocket launchers and, like, explosive weapons in general, uh, get different point values compared to regular firearms. Because when you kill enemies with a firearm, it's 100 points each. But if you kill an enemy with a rocket launcher, grenade, or the underslung grenade launcher on assault rifles, um, it's worth 500 points each time. The only reason I do not stick around with them is because of the fact that, Unlo when you're in Baku, unlike with the other weapons, explosive kills do not add to the end Baku timer. And because so much of my strategy is based around being in this state for as long as possible, I do not want to hold on to a weapon that can really only hold five rockets at a time. And in fact, all explosive weapons can only hold five rounds of itself at a time. Wow. Seems yeah. really limited. Like, it's... I mean, like, it's intent is that you want to use it in situations where, like, there's a whole lot of crowds and you want to get, like, the multi-kill bonuses. Obviously, but those are, like, yeah. very super situational. And I found that even in those situations, it's more practical for me to, like, have the sniper rifle with M'Baku and get those, like, multi-headshots. Like, it works better for me in those cases. Ah, oh, crap. It's another Metal Gear 5, uh, 3 escapee. <laughs> so this is the Saha unit. We saw like like the biochem unit in the last mission where like they had like the hazmat suits. These fight exclusively with Kukris and they're pretty much designed in such a way that like it not only encourages you to go in with melee but it actually highlights another thing that you should like know with your uh, firearms. And that is just because you start shooting with a gun doesn't mean you have to absolutely kill them with a gun. You can soften them up with a gun, go in range, and then hit the lighter heavy melee attack to instantly trigger like a contextual kill. Or better yet, if you're using the hand-to-hand -hand skill, just steal their kukris from them. Holy shit. Yeah. Also, the Mbaku trigger does count as an explosion. In fact, because like, and, and, th and that's basically an easy thousand points when you do that in the middle of a crowd. So that's another reason for why I don't really keep the rocket launcher, because I could just do that. Anyway, here's what you were talking about. Big Mouse Strikes again. We got big, heavy chain gunners. <laughs> yeah, like those dudes actually take a lot of damage and just doing a single like aim lock or melee shot on them will not kill them the first time. So you have to soften them up no matter what. I swear to beat those guys up a hell of a lot in fear. Yeah, they do kind of got that replica soldier vibe. Yeah. Only thing they're really missing is the giant shoulder guards. Yeah. And the really distorted, like, sounds of, like, a dude screaming, He's over there! Rather than mutilated pig noises. <laughs> oh shit! He's coming! Whoa. Yeah. So, the easiest way to like keep track of like when it's the right time to actually get a melee finish on this dude is to soften him up with bullets, specifically with the heavy machine gun because it can hold like 200 rounds at a time. And, or 100 rounds, I forget. Maybe 200 is actually the max, and it's just 100 per magazine. But the idea is that you want to see him stumble twice. When he stumbled twice, and you soften him just a bit more, then you can go in with, like, a melee shot. That's basically how you do it. Otherwise, like, be... just hanging back is, like, 
uh, and just wailing on it normally with regular melee is like super inefficient. Yeah, I can see why anyone who was thinking of this as just a regular cover shooter would be like, super stiny by the way. Oh, absolutely. And especially because their Gatling gun does so much damage that it's like... I was not able to do that combo the way I did without M'Baku triggered. I would have died at that door at any at any fucking point. Hmm. So, Can this next alive? bit after the cutscene is it, another wired. change in pace that is really only happens in this chapter, thankfully, because it's kind of a. Uh, it really does make it slow for no real good reason. It has to do with the mines, as you barbecue? just saw. <laughs> next time, think before you get us all killed. Sorry, Captain. I didn't know they were recruiting heaven smiles. <laughs> oh wait, that wasn't right. <laughs> right there. <laughs> nah, it just looks like Jag off hell. <laughs> Ivan, go on ahead. We'll catch Ivan, up. Ivan, do you copy? Switch your sunglasses to infrared. Then you'll see the bombs. Yeah, so that's what we have to do. We have to turn on our special infrared mode in our glasses. <laughs> oh god. You technically can still see the bombs, like they're like they, like they have stealth camouflage on them, but it's the kind where like it's the light reflecting, uh, refracting kind. But it's more practical just to like uh, do this. Just what every fast-paced action game needs—a slow and steady corridor. Even worse is that they have like a couple enemies like hidden in here, so it's like you're stuck trying to like. You see the enemies and like, oh good, I can go crazy again and start charging forward. Oh wait, boom. It'd be so much easier if you could just like pick up one of the bodies and start tossing it down the hallway. Yeah. But that's the end of that hallway. There's a there's a couple more spots with those bombs, but like it's they're they're actually signposted not too badly, and it's basically when you see a dead body around. Which actually, I think, makes a lot of sense from, like, a real-world logic perspective. Like, if you were the one setting up these traps, and you wanted to make sure that your own partners weren't getting caught in them, you would at least leave some sort of subtle signposting for them. Okay, it's uh, the corridor with the three torsos. Got that? Three. <laughs> not two, not four. Three. Yeah. So this is another good instance of, like, showing the fights with the, with the Saha unit. Whole lot of going back and forth between like the same techniques for for points and all that, but if you're playing this like more casually, like there's some fun to be had with the uh, if you're bringing in different melee weapons. <laughs> the sledgehammer was uh, doing some good job again, uh, doing a good job against them. Yeah, like it is nice that like with all these different melee weapons, they do have like different stats and like use cases. Like when you. Like when you do, when you come out of a slide or do a roll, if you have a weapon that is like heavier than the pipe, it like that upward swing that Ivan does with it always guarantees in a kill. Whereas with other weapons, when you come out of slide, it just like does damage and softens them up. So, so like the not going. Oh, oh no, you were saying? I was gonna say the the melee weapons are they essentially good for one kill and then done? Oh no, you can actually like keep using them as long as you want. It's just that the the thing like I just keep like throwing them away because of like the points you get from uh, from doing those like melee shot moves. Ah right. Yeah. It's like there's there's no weapon durability, thankfully. No. Oh, well, that's that's one thing. Yeah. This at least is a section where I feel like having to deal with the mines is justified because you already move slow when going through these crawl spaces anyway. Oh yeah. Yeah, just the uh, the hallways like not that good of a first impression on that. that especially that especially when they mix in the regular enemies because they try and like trip you up. That and the the mines are a lot more clustered together, so yeah. When you're, I also you, forgot when you're taking to it like seven at once, you feel and better. With those yeah, and with those specific enemies in that hallway, I forgot to mention that the biochem units—they have flamethrowers on their guns, and those things hurt. 
like really hurt. They are on the same tier as the heavy machine gunners, where if you don't have Mbaku triggered, you are basically dead in two seconds. Can you pick those up and use them? Yes, you can. Like nice. the like the thing with the loadouts is that while you get to choose your weapon, they are curated to be specific types. There are more weapons you get to try in the campaign than there are ones that you like have available to you in at the start of a mission in score attack like there are like no joke you actually get pistols in score attack like you get a revolver to choose from that you do not pick up at all in the main campaign but that i don't use it because useless. the because the handgun class of weapons in score attack have no real practical use like you want the shotgun as your primary because doing it in a slide is pretty good, not just for softening an enemy for like a melee kill, but also the specific shotgun I use, like outside of the poor visual and audio feedback, it actually fulfills the qualifications for what I consider to be a good shotgun. Like it's powerful, it has not shit range or stupidly widespread. So in the context of like this game's kill bonuses, it's a good one to have for those one shot kill like perks. And even if it doesn't get the one shot kill, again, it softens it up enough that when you go to a melee kill, you'll always get the finisher, which is its own bonus on top of that. Also makes it a rarity and it's a long distance shotgun worth a damn. Yeah, and like, when I realized that about that shotgun, it was what gave me, like, the clarity to kind of highlight what it was about this game with, like, people saying the shooting was bad. It's like, the mechanical functionality of the shooting in this is great. It, like, it tries its absolute best not to be ambiguous or lie to you with where your bullets are going to land. Like, even when your bullets do hit, you see that little X in the center that shows up as, like, an extra hit confirmation. Mm. And it's actually... I like that a lot because this game uses iron sights, and I traditionally not liked iron sights because, depending on how they're done in games, I feel like it hinders my ability to actually see what I'm shooting at more than help. Yeah, and stuff like that, hit confirmation signal should be mandatory in every shooting game. Yeah, but then it comes back to the other problem where I mentioned, like in the last video, because of how simple creating a shooting system is compared to, like, a robust melee combat system, so much more emphasis is put on making sure that the audio and visual feedback on using those guns is good. And, like, I don't blame them for that because, like, I mean, that's why Doom is so great. And I'm not just talking about 2016 or even Eternal. I'm even talking about original 93 Doom. Like, oh, yeah. That, that game needed that stuff to be on point for it to have birthed and, like, revolutionized the genre that it became. So, yeah, we now have another one of these LEVs. And thankfully, they gave us another rocket launcher. Silly. Just leaving their toys lying around. Yeah. That said, they do also leave around, like, two of the heavy machine gun guys, which is even more devastating if you don't have M'Baku. This at least is, like... This at least makes an, a good enough use of your, like, of your lateral movement, even if it doesn't take advantage of, like, your vertical, like, uh, movement. Because this, this is just a big open flat space, in essence, with, like, vehicles blocking the way. Take it you can't reload the RPG with the ammo box back up there? Oh, you can. Every Everything, not only does the ammo box reload all your weapons, but I, I, I can't believe I forgot to mention this in the first two videos because everything moves so fucking fast. But <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, enemies drop ammo boxes that act uh, that are like smaller but act the same way as those big dedicated ones. So it leads to another situation where... Manually reloading your weapons during combat is actively disadvantageous. It's way, way more practical to kill an enemy, look for a ma uh, ammo box that's lying around, pick it up, and then it just refills your magazine to, uh, to like, full. That's not something you ever see in games these days. Exactly, and, like, especially in the wake of playing stuff like... Doom 2016 and, and Eternal and just how much I love those games like more than any shooter these days it's like anything that lets you circumvent the whole act of reloading in some way 
be it what we have seen in this game, or even something like what Gears of War had with the active reload, like, give more systems or strategies to get around that because it's not fun to keep doing that, especially if you keep being given guns that chew through your bullets so quickly. Yeah, again, like, I'm, I'm amazed that active reloading didn't catch on in more games. Exactly, like, there, there's all kinds of different mechanics that are in that same situation, like the Nemesis system from Shadow of Mordor. Like, that's another thing that should have been, like, in more things, obviously. Yeah, there was something recently that had something similar to it, but I cannot remember what it was off the top of my head. Yeah. Heck, even, like, Doom Eternal's, like... Like, combat sandbox is something that I feel not many people are still wanting to commit to, like, mm. in trying to emulate. I feel like the closest we're seeing that's coming soon is, like, Shadow Warrior 3. Like, if you mm. saw, like, the, the trailer for that, where they're showing off the gameplay, it's like, like, Flying, oh, Flying Hog basically looked at it and was like, oh yeah, I guess we could actually emulate that. <laughs> it's better, it's better than the loot crap that we did in the second game. Yeah, I never did play the second one, um, and watching the trailer for the third one and was like, oh, that's right, it didn't have any of this shit. Yeah. Anyway, we are now in one of my favorite combat encounters of the entire campaign. It's ultimately still, like, linear, but the windiness of it all and the fact that there are a couple of alternate paths you can go down, um, it, it makes it, like, one of my favorites. And I actually use this as, like, the sort of the trailer for this LP <laughs> just to kind of highlight for people, hey, this is the high-quality gameplay you are going to see from this. No, come back. This one's actually good. <laughs> yeah. As you know, I'm pro. <laughs> if anyone watching this has been able to, like, pinpoint the Itagaki references I've been constantly making with that line and the whole perfect bald man, like, props on you. <laughs> you're, you're a true believer. <laughs> Perfect I come over man, here and get some liquor. tattoos. He is cool. <laughs> Words directly from Itagaki's mouth via his Facebook posts. He's... I find it so weird and kind of hilarious that while everyone has taken to Twitter, like, especially people of importance, Itagaki is like the one dude that is like, nah man, Facebook lets me gives me a better platform to just say what I want. Hell, George R. R. Martin still uses Live Journal. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> At least he did last I checked. Hmm. Yeah. He's spending more time on that than actually finishing his fucking book. Well, he is in jail now. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was the summer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess they're generous enough to keep giving him internet access so he can keep updating it from his cell. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of cover shooting before going, nah, screw that, time to slide into place. <laughs> Grab some tomahawks, because we want to hold on to these for a very special fight coming up. I feel that it is, like, thematically appropriate for what we're going to be seeing through the next couple doors. Why do I think we're going to get emails from some really angry people any second now? Why? For, for, for what things have you said? All of them? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, you know, thematic um, appropriateness and tomahawks. <laughs> oh, oh, no, and, no. It's and not Japan. You, <laughs> <laughs> you know. They're, no, they're not the best when it comes to cultural relations, let's be honest. No, it's, um... You'll see with this guy. Tied with another character for my favorite boss in this entire game. Is this what you've become, Ivan? I oh, you to boy. fight with your hands. I have been fighting with my hands. Have you, you not are. watched the last two A videos? Okay, some guns were used there and there, but no, we're not the focus. Your wealthy masters offer aid to the poor of Africa and Asia. And then take their but what about Brixton? What about London? Are you blind to the suffering? Hell yeah, Saha! Get him with the white shaming. <laughs> yeah, the suffering was a couple of pretty good games on the PS2. Yeah. 
If, if there's like an extra reason why I love this fight, it's the music lead up. This feels Ninja Gaiden rival boss fight as all oh, hell. <laughs> To the cries of the starving! Black man with tats versus white man with tats. Yeah, one's, this is a, one way or another, this is a hate crime. One's got tomahawks, the other's got kukris. <laughs> Double-handed light melee weapons. It's it's the it's, it is the method that I find most fun for fighting him. Especially because while I could go in with just hand-to-hand -hand for the whole thing. There is one disadvantage to using just your fists. You can't block melee strikes. You still take damage from it. Can you so block them with weapons? Yes, you can. You can You can actually block with your firearms, but because I don't really get into melee situations with guns, a lot of the time you don't really see it most of the time. But this, like, you see the flow of this fight. It is very classic Ninja Gaiden-like. There's a lot of, like, blocking, reading the opponent's attacks at a very fast pace and then, like, retaliating accordingly. And then knowing to back off when they actually get a hit in. Yeah, your, your standard fast-paced murder match. Yep. And it's like the final boss is actually of a similar nature to this, which is why that and this one are my favorite in the whole game. Like, the bosses in this are, like, in general, like, kind of like, kind of similar to how Ninja Gaiden bosses are a mixed bag because it is very obvious which types are the best and which types are just, like, bad gimmicks. Like, you remember the Molotov fight at the very beginning. That's arguably, like, the worst that the fights get in this. Because, mm. like, it's just you shooting at a dude on a wall. Like, what else is there to it? <laughs> so this is an incredibly <laughs> wimpy throw. Didn't even hit him square in the <laughs> dick, like... <laughs> <laughs> Doink. <laughs> Pathetic. J yeah, just like, just cut to Principal Skinner, just looking down. <laughs> even my belt buckle is disappointed in you. Yeah. But he's but he's still arrested the cookery on his chest as, like, uh, out of honor, I guess. <laughs> It was yeah, maybe, a pretty cool fight. <laughs> maybe it's just there like, okay, I will place it here so you can pick it up and try again. <laughs> no? That's, is, is that not what we're doing anymore? Oh well. Oh well. We are one third earned through this amazing nonsense. I don't even know what to call this. Ivan. Ivan, did you pick that up? I did. Something These about sunglasses. ibuprofen? The These sunglasses cover my entire field of view. How can I not miss it? <laughs> so yeah, that's a big score. Over 2k. And that's even before like the extra like point bonuses that we're going to get from clearing and the uh, time. Like, just the, the emphasis on using hand-to-hand -hand for those extra points and the lock shot and all that is... You see now why like my point um why my scores are as high as they are 